Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Stock Swiss Show Play of the Day. Actually, this ended up being a really, really great trade for me, and this was not the first thing I watched today, not even close. And uh, let's go over why. Why did I not watch this immediately today? Because it gapped up at first thing. So here you have this, and it's 7 o'clock in the morning. And I get up early, I looked at this early, I saw this very early, and BAC uh, gapped up. It was a gap up on earnings. And then all of a sudden, do, 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 right before the open, it started gapping down. Now, this is not always the case. Um, usually, what happens is something gaps and holds the gap, whether it gaps up or gaps down. But every once in a while, you'll have something that actually you look at, it's gapping up, and then all of a sudden it's gapping down. Or you look at, it's gapping down, and all of a sudden it's gapping up. So you can go back and relook at stuff. I usually don't do that. But, you know, given the time of the year, fall, earnings season, and the market as it is right now in days like today, I guess doing a one look-see over, you know, is a good idea. At least after 9:15. I mean, I think things if they gap like at 9:28 or 9:29, it's just they're not. They just don't have enough volume in them to go in and play. But Bank of America did have volume in the pre-market because of the fact that it was gapping, even though it was gapping up, it had volume. So I did not do uh, the first trade in this because I wasn't watching it. But if I had watched it and done the first trade, this is what I would have done. Here. Now, as it turns out. This would have been aggressive, okay? But if I like this gap, it was my top pick. I always do the first entry, and here it was. However, this was a really nice trade, and then I may never have played it again on the day. But I didn't do this trade, all right? But I saw it break. Actually, Brett in the room pointed it out, and I saw it break, and then I wanted to watch it to see if there could be some kind of setup in it. If you don't know how to look to trade stocks, though, you might have jumped in this thing here. Luckily, I did not. I waited, 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 was patient, knew what I was looking for, knew what I wanted it to do, and waited for the confirmation. Why? Why did I want to wait for the confirmation? Let's go back here on the five. This is now the what would have been the second entry in this. Again, I didn't do the first. I wanted to wait for the confirmation because at the time in the morning when this was rallying back, retesting the high of the day, the market was rallying. The market actually had already rallied over the high. And market was swish swashy. And the first thing the market did this morning was showing signs of bullishness. Okay. Now, it didn't last. The market broke today and broke the low late, late in the day, in the afternoon. But in the morning... I wanted to wait for the confirmation that BAC would follow through. And so it ended up following through. Okay. And here was the two minute. If you wanted to be aggressive, you could have shorted it on the two minute at 1614, 1615 ish. I ended up taking it at 12. Reset up again in here, had an ad, drop, and the break. This ended up making my day. This one trade made my day. Now, I did an ad, and I took double the size in the ad. When I do ads, I usually, that's usually how I do an ad, okay? I usually do an ad where I'm taking the trade on the confirmation that may or may not differentiate my stop or price, meaning that I might do an ad in something, which is, again, usually what I do and end up worsening my price a little tiny bit, not much, but a little bit, and or taking more risk. Sometimes I do an ad where I'm actually not changing my price. Price is the same, and but I'm taking more risk. It's still an ad, though. Why? Because of the fact that I'm taking more position size. And whether I change the stop or not, I'm taking more position size, which means more than one risk unit. We were discussing this today in the trading room about risk units and how one good trade can pretty much make your day. If you are having a bad day or a bad week, one nice solid trade can actually make your day positive or your whole week positive. 
Why? Because quality trades are important to have and are very, very strong and give you ads like this did. This actually had another ad. I, I did not, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't take any more after, this, after the first ad. I took an entry and an ad, and it was very close to the original price. But anyways, this actually could have taken more here. I mean, if you had had 100% conviction the market was going to break the low today, you could have taken more here. This actually had multiple ads, and I, I, I didn't do this one in here. Okay, I felt that was too far from my price, and I was waiting to see exactly what the market was going to do exactly here in the afternoon. But today was the day we could have followed some things on through, again, into the lunchtime period or afternoon. Why? You had the market with you. You had the market with you once again today to the downside, falling and dropping late into the lunchtime period or afternoon. And if you've got something working for you, you may as well just let it ride on out. But this concept of risk reward is important because if people don't understand it, then they'll be all over the place with their risk. And again, one solid trade can make your whole day. Even if the first thing or the second thing you like in the day doesn't end up working. Although I have found that many, many people when they uh, watch something and it doesn't work, have a hard time then doing another quality trade because they get all in their head about money. The most important thing that I actually teach in the GAP class is that you have to focus on the right information. Whether the trade works or not, it's never your fault. It's not the market's fault either and it's not the stock's fault. It's the same way when something does work. You have to know what to look for. If you see something that rates per the system and sets up, you take the trade. You size yourself according to the risk. And you have the targets and you play it on now. And if it works, you stick with it and you play it out to the target. And if it stops you out, then you take the one hour loss. That's why you have to size yourself correctly in the trades though. Because if you size one trade, for a risk that's too great and it doesn't work, and you size another trade for uh, your regular risk and it goes on to work and be a really nice trade, like BAC ended up turning out to be today, then you won't see the results that you really could have seen if you sized everything the same. It doesn't matter to me what people size things. It just has to be equal. It's a constant. It's like if I wrote a, wrote a algebraic thing, it's the C is the constant, which is the risk, which is the R unit. It has to be constant. And it has to be the similar at least for a few months. It's not something that should be changed once a week or just at the whim. Whether the market's rallying or falling, either way, it shouldn't be. So BAC, I said there had a possibility of actually going to 570, 560, or 550 on the day. As it turns out, BAC went all the way down. It basically almost went to 1540, uh, or I meant 1570, 1560, 1550, 1540. It went down to 1543, and the market helped this go really bigger. But I, I, I really thought 1570 was realistic then when I chose, decided to do the ad, and I would have been very happy actually with that. I really would have been happy with that, but as it turns out, it just kept on going and rode all the way down. So nice, nice, nice solid trade here in BAC. I'm, I'm just really, really happy with the day, and I got two more days of trade out the week, so we'll see what we get. And I'll be watching the market extremely close tomorrow to see what it's going to do. Look at the volume in this thing. <laughs> Look at the volume in that. Ay, 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 ay. So, yeah, so BAC, here it is. BAC, play of the day here. And it was all due to Brett popping it up on the list. And I took a look at it and saw how it broke. And a really, really nice trade here in BAC. I did the right thing, waiting for the perfect entry. I'm so good at entries. Did the ad, got an excellent ad. You could have even heavily traded this with more size then, even more. Why? Because BAC, you can just load it up. You can just load it up on BAC because you can take so much volume in this. I didn't realize there was 170 million shares in this, though. I just I just saw that now. But this, this thing always has volume. Anyways, nice, nice day in here. Uh, for me, and I'm really proud of myself for, you know, following this trade through basically and taking the risk that I did with the ad because it was more risk than just one R and I'm allowed to do that per my trading plan on an ad. But if you're just looking at one trade, one stock symbol, one R, one trade, the R should be the same. If you do an ad and you allow yourself to do that, you're doing it because of the confirmation. And uh, everybody has to know where they're at with their own risk amounts. It's something that you really have to decide when you set up your account and decide you want to trade. But you got to know a system that teaches you how to make money. 
So here it is, BAC, Golden Gap here of the day. Have a great day, everyone. It is Wednesday, two more trading days of the week. We'll see what we get tomorrow morning. We'll see what kind of picks we get. If anyone's interested in the Golden Gap class, email me at melissa at the The next class is October 25th and 26th. Have a great day, everybody.